In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build your next PC, be it a gaming PC, a workstation, a creative work suite, an online browser, no matter what you do with this PC, it's going to be perfect for you. I'm gonna teach you how to build a PC that is not only gonna last you a long time, but it's gonna give you the ability to upgrade and grow with you. Let's go over real quick what's included in this build and then we'll get started. Housing this bad boy is going to be the Geometric Future M4 King Arthur case, this brand new case. It's got a lot of great features. Then we're going to be using the AMD Ryzen R7 7700 processor. Cooling this bad boy is going to be the Junior Eskimo 24 240mm liquid cooling unit. We're going to be utilizing 32 gigs of DDR5 6000MHz RAM from our friends at Patriot. To power us today and well into the future, we're going to be using a 1000 watt EVGA 1000 GT power supply. Putting this all together, we're going to be using the ASRock X670E Pro RS motherboard. And for super fast storage, we're going to be utilizing the Patriot Viper VP4300 PCIe M.2 SSD. Let's get started. We're going to start off by installing the AMD Ryzen 7 7700 processor. We're going to be installing it within the socket. Now, to get this CPU in there first, we're going to need to open this up. To open it, we'll push down on this arm, we'll pull it out, and then we'll raise it, and then just slide it back. And now we're able to raise this lid. You'll notice on the CPU right up here and flipping it over, right over here, there's a gold triangle. There's also a little triangle right up here on the top left hand corner. We're going to go ahead and match those two up. Now, before we do that, make sure we don't touch any of these pins. If you touch the pins, you could damage the board, becoming almost impossible to repair. And without that being fully intact, we won't be able to use it. Aside from matching up this triangle to that triangle, you'll notice right here, and right over here, there's little plastic pegs sticking out. You'll notice those same notches right over here and right over here. So we're going to match this triangle and these two notches. So we'll just flip it over and then we just drop it right in place. You're going to want to wiggle it around just a little bit just to make sure it's locked in there. Once the CPU's in place, we're going to go ahead and drop this lid down and dropping that lid down is going to push this CPU socket cover out of the way. Make sure you save this CPU socket cover because in case you want to take the board out, you want to take the CPU out, you'll put this back, that way you don't damage those pins. So put this in the motherboard box. Now, after we do that, we're going to want to raise this bar again. We're going to lock this lip right in place. Now we're gonna push this down. And like we did before, we'll do it in reverse. We'll push the bar out a little tiny bit, drop it lower and we'll lock it right under this arm here. So now we've installed a CPU. All right, now that we have the CPU in, now we need to install the RAM. Right over here on the motherboard, silk screen down there, we can see the configuration for the RAM. We can see DDR5 underscore A1 underscore A2 underscore B1 underscore B2. This would be A1, A2, B1, and B2. In order for this to actually power on and to work, we need to install the RAM in channels A2 and B2. So to do that, first off, under A1, we're going to go ahead, open up this tab, just pull it out like that, and right over here as well. And now we're going to drop the memory in place. But it's not that easy. You see how it's seesawing around? You'll notice on the RAM, there's a little notch right in the center. Then there's also a notch right over here in the center of the RAM. We need to make sure that this notch matches up with this notch. So in order to get it correct, all we need to do is turn it around and then match up the edges over here and just push it down. You'll notice when we push it down, this little knob we pushed out as well as this one is going to go ahead and lock in place. And we're going to hear the memory click in place. So just push it down straight down and now the memory is locked in place. Now it won't come out if you tugged on it. Now we'll go ahead and repeat that same process on B2. So we'll open these up. Then with the sticker facing that way, matching up over here.
and the memory locked in place. So now we've installed 32 gigs of RAM. And now we're going to install the M.2 SSD. On this particular board, we have a few spots to install that M.2 SSD, either directly here under the heat shield, right under here under the Hyper M.2 slot, and then under this heatsink over here, which is two M.2s. I'm going to install it directly under this heatsink, which is right over the PCIe slot where we're going to be installing the graphics card. We'll remove that over here. Now, some M.2 SSDs will have a heatsink like this one does. For this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it since it already has its own heat shield here. Now we're going to go ahead and install it. We're going to match up the notch right over here with the notch right over here. So we'll just align that up here and push it directly into the socket. You'll notice these gold pins, you want them to disappear. So I'll push that right here and then we'll drop it and that'll expose the hole right over here. If this is the first time you've used this heat shield, make sure you remove the film that's in between the thermal paste and that would be in between the M.2 SSD. It's already removed from here. So we're just going to go ahead and screw this in. Can be a little difficult to match them up at times. And now you've just installed an M.2 SSD. So now that we've installed the CPU, the M.2 SSD and the RAM, and now we need to install the liquid cooling unit. We'll start by placing the fans on the radiator. We'll have the hoses sticking out like this and we'll place the fans facing with that big O facing out and we'll have the cables facing this way, since this is going to be towards the rear of the case, this will be towards the front. We'll do the same for this since they're going to be joined together. Then we'll go ahead and utilize these screws and we'll screw these fans right in place. So this way the air is going to be blowing through the radiator. This will be towards the top of the case. Now we'll just turn it around to get this side. So after screwing down those fans, we're gonna notice each of these fans has two sets of cables. So one of these is going to be for PWM to connect the fans to the fan header on the motherboard so that the fans actually spin up. And then the other set, is the RGB connections. Okay, so first off, we're going to go ahead and connect the fan into the other fan. So just like right over here, we'll connect these two ends. So now this fan is connected to the power of this fan. And now we connect this onto a header on the motherboard, but we'll do that once we get everything together. So don't worry too much about that. Then we'll connect this fan like we did before to this fan. This part is for RGB alone. Now we'll connect that to the motherboard. Actually, that particular one will connect to adapters, but don't worry, we'll get into that in a little bit. Now we'll set this aside for right now. And we'll grab the motherboard. Now, since we're going to be installing this liquid cooling unit, we need to remove these two plastic brackets. So we'll just go ahead, unscrew them. And like we saved the CPU socket cover, we'll want to save these brackets and these screws in the motherboard box to make sure we don't lose them. And now we're going to apply the thermal paste. We're just gonna put a big old blob right in the center. And once we apply the pump on here, that's gonna go ahead and spread that out evenly for us. All right, and now to attach the heat pump over here, we're gonna use the AIM-4 screws 
even though this is AIM-5, and we're going to use the short side and screw them right into the screw holes. Now we're going to set this aside just for right now. And now bringing the liquid cooling unit back in, we're going to use these AMD brackets and we're going to peel this off of the pump as well as the bottom piece. That way the cold plate makes contact with the CPU and the thermal paste. And now we're going to be placing it face up like this so that we read geo. So what we're going to do is you'll notice this side has an indentation and this side pops up. So what we're going to do is the indentation is going to face towards over here and the part that pops up is going to face towards the motherboard. So we're going to slide it in just like this. And this is going to go under this piece of plastic here, the lip. And we're going to have to push a little hard to get it in there. And that's it. We got it. And now we'll do the same thing for this side. The part sticking out is facing towards the motherboard. Just push that right in here. Okay, and it kind of clicks in place. Now we're set there. Now we're putting the motherboard back over here. And I'm going to put the liquid cooling unit standing up like this because the hoses typically will be around the front of the case. And that helps it so that this faces up. And I'm just moving all the cables out of the way. And now we're going to drop this right in place right over here and notice how these screws are going through the screw holes up here as well and just push it down now what that's doing it's spreading the thermal paste now unfortunately we can't see it making contact but it is making contact so now we're going to be using the screws they provided just right over here to all four corners and we're not going to be applying them very hard right now maybe about 50% of the way and along the top as well. Okay, now that they're there, we're going to put them 100% by hand. So not incredibly tight, of course, because we can only do so much with our fingertips. Now we'll use a real screwdriver, real Phillips head screwdriver to tighten it 100%. And by real, I just mean a bigger one. And then notice I do a diagonally one here, then one over here, then I'm gonna do one over here, and then one over here. And now we'll use the PWM cables for the pump right over here. We're going to connect this piece here closest to this end right over here just like that. And then we're going to connect this to a, either an AIO header on the motherboard or a CPU fan optional. And then this other end at the other end of the cable is going to go to the fans on the liquid cooling unit. Now, I'm not too worried about this right now because this isn't the cabling portion of the build, but I'm just going to do it really quick, then make it look better a little bit later. And for the ARGB side, we'll use this cable provided by the system and what we'll do is since this is the piece that's going to connect to the motherboard we'll put a cap on it for right now we'll disconnect the other side removing that cap then we'll join these pins to this female side right over here we'll go ahead and put a cap on this side for right now maybe we want to add more fans later and then this end will connect to this end on the fans on the liquid cooling unit. And then we'll just connect them just like that. Again, we're not worrying about this part right now. This is just to have it connected. We'll make it look better later on in this video. Now, before we can actually get this motherboard inside of the case, we need to make sure we have the correct amount of standoffs inside of the case for this motherboard. So just to make sure there's one standoff screw right over here. Another one here, here, so three, four, five 
six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So let's check out the case real quick. Inside of the case with all the cables kind of in the back, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Notice there is that missing standoff right over here. It's kind of hidden in the shadow, but it's right over there. That one isn't hundred percent needed, but since we do have the standoff, I'm going to go ahead and screw that in real quick. And now utilizing that standoff that came in the accessory bag, as well as the standoff screw bit, I'm going to go ahead and drop off that standoff right in here. And then I'm going to screw it in my fingertip first, right over here. It is kind of a tight space especially with the camera in the way. And now I'll go ahead and screw it in. All right, and now we have that standoff in place. And now we're going to drop the motherboard in place. But one very important thing that I didn't notice before that's going to make our life a little bit easier is right in the center of the case is a reverse standoff screw. That is where we can line up the motherboard without actually having to put a screw in place. Now zoomed out some, it's right here, right in the center. So we're going to go ahead and grab the motherboard, kind of drop it in place. And thankfully the IO shield is already attached to the back of this motherboard. So we don't have to worry about putting that IO shield back here first. It's already there. Now just line it up as best you can with your sight. Lighting it up right over here and then making sure that that reverse standoff comes out right over here. And there we go. Popped right into place. When that lined up, all the other screws lined up as well. Once you have the motherboard lined up, we're gonna use 10 of these motherboard screws and we're just going to go ahead and screw all them in. So I'll do that off camera, be right back. Now, next we're going to install the radiator, but because the radiator is going to go right up here at the top of the case, it's going to block off a lot of the connections we need up here. For example, the 8-pin EPS CPU power connection and the 4-pin CPU power connection. Now, generally, we don't need both. We need one or the other. I would recommend the 8-pin more as it provides more wattage over the 4-pin, but having both connected allows you to overclock. Not that we're going to, but the potential is always there if you wanted it to. Then also, we'd connect the ARGB connection and the PWM fan header. So let's get all of that situated real quick. So for the water pump or the AIO header, it's actually going to be right over here on the corner of the motherboard. And then I'll connect it right up here. Right over here, just below that water pump connection, there are two ARGB headers. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the ARGB cable. Then we'll use that female side, come around here, and of course we do need to connect it, but we have a big cluster of cables here and I still need to connect the eight pin and the four pin CPU EPS power. These are the ends that go to the power supply and these are the ends that go into the motherboard. I've disconnected it just to make it easier for this particular video. And then there's a little grommet right over here, an opening. So I'm going to go ahead, slide both of those cables I'm first going to connect the four pin since that's kind of out of the way. Okay, so I have the four pin. Now this comes in two four pins that join into an eight. Only one of the two will fit and you don't have to force it. So it'll either just slide in or it won't. And that's how you know it fits. And then we have the eight pin. And then you'll know either if it's like this or if it's like this because this middle piece will be together like that. And then with that together, easily push those together. Now let's go ahead and install the radiator. Now just remember we have this huge jumble of cables that we're going to have to deal with at a later point, but they're there, so we'll have to deal with them. Now, I just realized that these cables are facing out, so they're going to look incredibly ugly. So what I'm going to do is just unscrew these fans and I'm going to turn this this way, actually like that and this like that so that both of these cables are on this side and I'm gonna do it off camera. I don't wanna bore you, so one sec. 
Literally that easy. Let me screw it back in. All right, easy enough swap. And now we're going to just push everything kind of down. And now we're just going to match up all of these so that we can see the screw holes here. And then we'll go ahead and match up all these screw holes. And I'll do this off camera, so one sec. Now we have the radiator in place. Now let's go ahead, put in a power supply. In this case, there's two ways to install the power supply. Very, very odd ways to install them. First, we can feed the power supply directly in here so that the back is sticking out and we need to put that power cable right back here. A bit awkward because typically the power supplies are down here or maybe up here on older system. The other way is incredibly odd, but it's the way we need to install it in this case because of the length of our power supply. I'll list everything down below on the screen. The other way is with the power supply facing straight down so that the rear is right here and we have to plug it in just like that. So again, incredibly strange. And I know that not because I measured it and thought ahead, but because this is probably take number eight. All right, so let's go ahead and disassemble this real quick because we do need to disassemble it to get the power supply in. You would have thought they would have an easier way. So to remove it, we'll need to remove about seven or so screws. First, we'll remove this panel. And whatever you do, do not throw away the screws. So that gives us the ability to install larger video cards, the 4090 for sure. And then we'll remove these screws. One right up here. And then a hidden one right over here, right over here. It connects the front of the case to that shroud. And now that shroud comes off. So that leaves the case looking like it fell apart. And mind you, you could take it apart even further, which I do actually like that. The two CPU power connections that we fed in through the grommet right down here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect those back to the power supply. Actually, that wasn't too bad. So the power supply is kind of going to be like this. So what I'll do is, since I have to put it like that, I'll just slide it right up in here and screw in the power supply as we normally would on just about any other case. And now we'll just put everything back. And then once that's in, we'll go ahead and screw in all the screws that we removed. And then we'll feed that power supply cable right through here and plug it right up here. That's so awkward, but because it's low profile, I guess it won't look that bad. <laughs> it's so awkward. We're going to go ahead and install the Sapphire 7600. And so for that, they have everything a little bit awkward here. Notice that it's being blocked off here because of that vertical mount. So I'm thinking, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to remove it so that I can remove the second and third PCIe slot covers. Then I'll install it just like that. And let me bring you around to show you close up how I did that. Now in this part, we have the mess of the cables, but we're going to make sure the PCIe fingers slide into this PCIe slot. So we'll slide that right in there. Then we'll just push it in with our fingers. And the card goes right in place. Holding the card in place, there is a 
PCIe locking mechanism right over here. I'm gonna push it to release the card. So this little mechanism right here, many times it'll be closed. You're going to need to open it so the card can fit in. Once it's open, you're gonna notice once I push that card in, it's gonna lock right in place, just gonna go. See how that locked the card right in place? Now putting this mechanism back in place, we'll just slide it right in here and just screw it back in. So hardware wise, we're done with the build. Now we just need to connect all the cables along the bottom. We need to connect the power supply cable, at least over here, the ATX24 pin, the PCIe cable, and then all the rest of these cables, which chances are we're just gonna end up hiding since we have mostly everything connected as it is. So let's get into that real quick. All right, so we're coming around the back to start the cabling portion. All right, so since the USB Type-C, I know on this particular board is right along here. I'm gonna feed it right over here. And I'll come back to that in one sec. The HD audio is typically right over here on the rear of the motherboard. So I'm gonna slide that in the grommet down here. The USB 3.0 is right over here beneath the ATX24 pin. So right next to the USB Type-C. So I'm gonna feed that right through here as well. The front panel headers, that's going to be right along the middle of the case, which is the left side of the board right over here. Actually, that's the right side of the board. This is the left side of the board. So everything over there is in place. Now I need to feed some things back through this grommet over here, since our power supply is now dangling cables down here. I need to feed that 24 pin or so what I'll do over here, moving this out of the way so you can see it, the ATX24 pin, I'm gonna go ahead and connect that cable. That's it, easy enough. And I'm going to push the excess along the back over here. And we'll get back to that a little bit later on to make it look nicer. So since we pulled in the USB 3.0, and the USB type C, you can see that right over here. It's very hard there is because it's so tight. I don't have a whole lot of light to show you things. Okay, so that's connected. And now beneath that is the USB type C over here. All right, so just sliding all that excess cable back here out of sight, out of temporary mind. We'll have to deal with it again in a second. There is going to be a PCIe cable right over here. So let's see if we have it anywhere easy to get to. And it is an eight pin PCIe cable. So normally I leave all the excess cables in case we need them. But in this case, I don't have a spot to have them where I can hide them nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, since it is a modular power supply, I'm just removing them. And I think I'll leave the other PCIe 8 pin in case I introduce the 7900 XT. And that one cable I need. just temporarily like that. Let's go ahead and connect all these down here. Right over here is where typically people have the most problems and that is for the front panel. You will always need to read the manual. You can see right over here, it goes over everything and I'll print it on the screen as well. But in the manual, it shows you how to connect all of those. Then it shows you the negative and positive polarity. So for example, with power LED, you'll see that's positive, there's a plus there, and that's negative, there's a minus there. So positive will be on the left, and negative will be right next to it. There's HD LED, again, the positive is on the left, negative is on the right, so 
text face down in this case. All right, that's plugged in. And now we have reset right there. And then the power button just above that. And then we pull the excess through here and it's nice and hidden. So then coming over here, right here is HD audio. And then we'll find that missing pin right over here. And that missing pin is on the top. All right, and then I'll pull the excess through here. So that's one of the tightest builds I've ever had to do on this bike for you. So now everything will work. You press the power button, it'll turn on, it'll work. It just doesn't look pretty. So let's go ahead and make it look pretty. We're gonna do this in fast forward. So I'm thinking that's it for right now. I could play with it a little bit more, a little bit later on. I think she looks real sexy. A few things could be improved, but I think it looks real good. Coming along the rear over here. I'm so happy we have a ton of space. We have about two inches. This I can flatten back a little bit as well when I close everything back, but I think this is gonna look real good. Give me one more sec. For the top, the power cable. If you remember, it comes out from the back over here, which is incredibly odd, but then we fished it up through here. Then we plug it in here on our power supply. Now the last piece is getting the side panel on, but that's going to be a little difficult. Let me show you. So if you remember the back panel, it came around the top as well. So with the power right up here, we can't fit it there's going to be a huge gap and then it's not going to be fitting on the side correctly. See how it's kind of hanging over here? Well, because up here we have to put a little different. So if you notice right over here, there's little cutouts where you can slide in pieces of metal and they're for these little pegs over here. But normally they would only be like one here, one here, one here. There's two because you have two options. If this were a regular power supply, you would put it down here and you notice these holes line up. But because there's a power supply there and there's a cable sticking out, rather than us putting it here, we're going to put it right here. So again, a regular case would go like that, but this isn't a regular case. So rather than it lying flat, we're gonna put those little nubs right here And now there's a hole right here. You'll see the side panel has these holes right here. And then now these holes up here as well, whereas they would have been down here. 
In here, we don't notice any difference whatsoever. Then in here, these holes would have just been three holes lower. Now, to give you a better idea from the top, kind of looks like it's hovering there, but obviously it can't do that. So there's this piece of metal here. Here's that power supply cable kind of sticking out and then going around all over here. So kind of cool, extremely odd. This case was a nice build. It was a little odd. There was a few things quite off on it, but overall it was nice. This was a little confusing. This power supply up at the front with the fan over here, it's going to be sucking air through here. And then the Eskimo 24, the lip cooling unit, also from Geometric Future, will be sucking all that warm air out and blowing it out through the top, through its extremely unique top, I will mention. So, of course, some is probably gonna come out here, but it doesn't really matter. There's more than enough space. Now, the concerning part is these are the only two fans in this case. There's no fans here. Well, there's this fan here, but it's going to be sucking warm air out and then sucking it out through here as well. And actually also blowing it out through the rear of the power supply. So I'm incredibly curious to see how this is going to heat up. So in this video, I've shown you how to build inside of the Model 4 from our friends at Geometric Future. A very odd design. I'm incredibly curious to see how well it cools being that it doesn't bring any fans. The only two fans are going to be from the Eskimo 24, also from our friends at Geometric Future. So in my next video, I'm going to do a complete review on this case, including thermals and all. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you want to see how I review, make sure to check out this video up above. My last review, we went through all the testing, all the thermals. We did builds as well, but before that. But I want you to check out that video and let me know if you have any ideas in the meantime on anything that I'm missing in that review so that I can include it in this one. This is your friend Iggy with This Bites for You Up. See you guys.